all people, be it female or male, are born with breast cells or tissue. Though it is very rare for a man to get breast cancer, one out of 80 falls victim to breast cancer. Breast cancer in men is usually detected as a hard lump underneath the nipple. But if detected early, like any other breast cancer survivor, it can be treated and lives a normal life. Did you tell your children about what's going to happen? Yes. We got the That's children. after you made the decision you're going to get them removed. Mm -hmm. okay. We came back home. I told my children. Some cried. Some were like, Mommy, will you make it? I was like, Yes. So I got to know about it via a phone call. I'd made at home, I was going to do my exams. And then they told me she was going to an operating room, but they did not tell me what about. Then after some time, when I called back, that's when they told me it was cancer. Uh, firstly, I didn't believe it. I thought it was all a joke, because the time when she was suspecting to be to have cancer, with, it was just exercise, you know? She was just exercising, and then she found this lamp. So me, I took it that she's just, it's just those normal things, something that will come and go. So when they actually confirmed it, I was very, very devastated. I just imagine the world coming down because every cancer person I've heard of usually dies. You never hear of survivors. So it was like no hope at that time. And at that age, it was really, really difficult. You could not take it in and I was thinking, how will I manage? How will I look after these little children? Because it's like, we need a motherly figure and all that. Apart from the children, did you tell any other family members? Yes, now it had to. All my family members, by the way, had known that I had cancer, but now, and I had told them that I was to lose one breast. But now I had to go back to tell those very close about now the new developments, okay? The doctor had organized the surgeon who had accepted to work on me. And before that, I had so much from my relatives, others of course telling me not to accept to do it, my breast, and told me not to accept to remove my breasts, okay? How old was the firstborn then? The firstborn was not around. She was in South Africa, okay? She yes, she knew. She had just started working, and she actually had wanted me to go and have um, a surgery in South Africa. Mm. But uh, we against it because she was just starting to work, mm. and that would be disturbing and her. And I'm sure it's costly. It's costly, and... So what happened after we... When you reached hospital, did they first cancel you before going into the surgery room? Actually, I was lucky that there was one survivor who is my friend now. She came and cancelled me a day before and even promised to come back in the morning before I went to theatre. The lady you met, who is also a breast cancer survivor, was she a patient in Mulago Hospital? She wasn't a patient, but she works in Mulago. She's a doctor? Yes, she is. And she, uh, she came and counseled me and um, gave me hope and encouraged me to go through it, that it's doable, and that she also was scared, but now she's living her life. And she also told me that she'll come back in the morning to see me off to the theater. I was so grateful. We shared quite a bit. And uh, after that, I was encouraged. And I said, well, I'll also do it, okay? Did she come? Yeah, she did. She, made, she kept her word in the morning before I went. That's she nice. She came and actually wished me well and prayed with me and prayed and assured my mom that it's doable, that I'll be fine. Hmm. So at least I thank God for her. She was God sent because at least that encouraged me. And in the morning as I was being taken to the theater, the theater attendant came to take me and I joked with him and I said, if it wasn't against the hospital regulations, I would have walked myself down to the theater <laughs> because I was not feeling any pain. And there was okay? no use of you being taken on a stretcher, yes, to, on a stretcher to the surgery room, to the theater. I could walk myself down. Yes. My breasts were not paining, okay? I was okay, actually. So, when we reached the theater, of course, as I was going, my mom was crying. I said, watch me. 
I'm stepping in their life and I'm getting out alive. Okay? <laughs> I'm not staying there. You had there. all the determination. Yes, and I knew that God was on my side. Yes. And I was, nothing was going to go wrong. I said, God has revealed to me nothing will go wrong whatsoever. Okay? Everything will just be fine. So I was wheeled to the theater and uh, I waited and they did what they had to do. Mm. And before I went in for surgery, when I was told that I, I was to have double mastectomy, um, I was still debating, should I, should I not, okay? Then my husband, when we came back home, told me a story. She actually started, I have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And what is the story? Then he started, once upon a time, the way we used to tell stories when we were young, once upon a time, there was this man, his name was Charles, and there was this girl, her name was Margaret. Uh -huh. And what happened? Um, Charles fell in love with Margaret. And one day, he told Margaret, that, look, you're so beautiful because of your breasts. And I'm going to marry you because of those breasts. As they married, they had children. Um, then along the way, the breast became sick. So that meant Margaret was sick too. And Charles and the children stood by her and actually encouraged her to receive treatment, okay? Because Charles and the children wanted Margaret alive with or without breasts. And when Margaret was not getting it, then Charles told her, I loved you. Maybe I wouldn't have fallen in love with you if you didn't have those breasts. Maybe you wouldn't have breastfed our children if you didn't have those breasts. Mm. But now the breasts are sick, so the breasts have to go and remain with Margaret. Yeah. And I was like, what? said, yeah, the reverse wouldn't be true. Because if you don't get treatment, we may not have Margaret. Yes. So I and the children want Margaret alive. Wow. And then ask me, do you agree? <laughs> wow. And I said, yes, I, I can't agree less. Yes. I'm sure that's where you made up your mind. Yeah, that was more than encouraging. Turning point. Yes. yes. Because I saw everyone wanted me to get better. Everyone wanted me alive. Okay, now why don't I give that to my family? Okay, these were the people who were closest to me. The worst is over. The rest, leave it to God, but I know that I'm pulling through. So, after they removed the catheter, I had two drainage bags. So I'll tie my lesu around and walk. And I didn't mind. I didn't care about anybody. All I wanted was to get healed, okay? And then the doctor discharged me and told me to go back to Mulago after a month. To continue with my chemotherapy, I hadn't completed. Everyone was there for me, okay? Family, friends, and that's when you get to know who are your friends. Those who are my real friends, they were there all the time. Even those far away, they would call. They would send messages. So I really got that support. Me and my husband looked after a certain girl who had cancer. Mm. I think it was gum cancer oh a few years ago, mm. and she passed on. Mm. But one thing um, I remember mm. is uh, the cancer treatment was really expensive. Mm. How did you manage? Uh, it was basically my family, I would say. OK, um, carried the burden. Okay, of buying everything I needed. It was not about medication alone. Um, the care, okay, you have to go in and out of hospital. You have to eat this, you have to have this. So they really did their part. I didn't lack. Mm. After you came back home, after the surgery, the nine days you spent in hospital, now you're home. Did the doc doctors detect that this um, cancer is gone? No. Um, I still had to go back for my chemotherapy. I had stopped halfway. So after a month, well, I you went had back. to finish the doses. Yes, I had to finish the doses. And even then, 
doctor decided to give me one dose because of the one month I spent at home. So after that, after the chemo, everything went okay. I finished the doses and then the doctor told me that now it was time to hand me over to the radiotherapy unit for radiation. When you finished your dose January this year, did you go back for further tests to find out if you're free of cancer? Yeah, even before I finished the tamoxifen, I've been going. Yes, the, the first review when you finish treatment, okay, um, I was given three months. After three months, I went back after six months. After six months, then it's once a year, unless I have issues with my health, okay? So basically every year, at least I have to go for reviews. What are you doing with your life now? Uh, immediately I finished um, radiation when I started tamoxifen, because now I was feeling energized. I was... Um, uh, feeling okay to carry on, all right? So I made a profound decision to help others. Because through my own experience, I saw a lot of gaps, okay? I realized a lot of gaps, especially uh, dealing with patients, okay? I understand your breasts were removed, but when I just came in, I expected to find a flat-chested person. Because um, we already had a conversation on phone, you not having breasts. Yeah. What what are you using or what do you have in there? Okay, a lot of people get confused when I tell them that I don't have breasts. Okay. But these are modern times, all right? Yes. There are always um, what we call substitutes for everything. Even with hair, we have substitutes. I can show you that it just feels oh. okay. We Can I touch it? Yeah, sure. Okay. It feels like a breast. Exactly. Like real skin. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it also actually has a nipple. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't it kind of heavy for you? Um, you choose the size according to what you used to be. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there a piece of advice you want to give to our viewers, especially those who have cancer at the moment, who are struggling with cancer? The one thing I want to, to tell them, basically, is to encourage them. Along the way, they may feel like they are tired, they want to give up. But I want to assure you that it's doable, okay? Um, sometimes you're too weak, but you can still pick up the pieces, all right, and finish your treatment, okay? God willing. And with cancer, it's the same. Let us continue to trust that they will do the right thing. And I also call, up, call upon the doctors that God is entrusting them to take care of our health. Yes. So if they are to do it, let them do it with one heart, okay? From Margaret's story, we've learned that it's important to check our breasts quite often because if detected early, there's a chance to life again. She detected breast cancer early before it became uncontrollable and now she's living a normal life, married with children and has devoted her entire life to helping in sensitizing women not to die as a result of breast cancer. So this month of October, endeavor to go for a breast cancer checkup or you can check yourself at home. This has been Life Stories. I'm Zuena Chirema. Till next time, God bless you.